God message for you today, don't be so hard on yourself, I can bring good even out of your mistakes. Your finite mind tends to look backward, longing to undo decisions you have come to regret. This is a waste of time and energy, leading only to frustration, instead of floundering in the past, release your mistakes to me, look to me in trust, anticipating that my infinite creativity can weave both good choices and bad into a lovely design. Because you are human, you will continue to make mistakes, thinking that you should live an error-free life is symptomatic of pride, your failures can be a source of blessing, humbling you and giving you empathy for other people and their weaknesses. Best of all, failure highlights your dependence on me. I am able to bring beauty out of the morass of your mistakes. Trust me and watch to see what I will do. Anxiety is a result of envisioning the future without me. So the best defense against worry is staying in communication with me. When you turn your thoughts toward me, you can think much more positively. Remember to listen as well as to speak, making your thoughts a dialogue with me. If you must consider upcoming events, follow these rules. 1. Do not linger in the future because anxiety sprout up like mushrooms when you wander there. 2. Remember the promise of my continual presence. Include me in any imagery that comes to mind. This mental discipline does not come easily, because you are accustomed to being God of your fantasies. However, the reality of my presence with you, now and forevermore, outshines any fantasy you could ever imagine. Be willing to go out on a limb with me. If that is where I am leading you, it is the safest place to be. Your desire to live a risk-free life is a form of unbelief. Your longing to live close to me is at odds with your attempts to minimize risk. You are approaching a crossroads in your journey. In order to follow me wholeheartedly, you must relinquish your tendency to play it safe. Let me lead you step by step through this day. If your primary focus is on me, you can walk along perilous paths without being afraid. Eventually, you will learn to relax and enjoy the adventure of our journey together. As long as you stay close to me, my sovereign presence protects you wherever you go. Be prepared to suffer for me, in my name. All suffering has meaning in my kingdom. Pain and problems are opportunities to demonstrate your trust in me. Bearing your circumstances bravely in thanking me for them is one of the highest forms of praise. This sacrifice of thanksgiving rings golden-toned bells of joy throughout heavenly realms. On earth also, your patient suffering sends out ripples of good tidings in ever-widening circles. When suffering strikes, remember that I am sovereign and that I can bring good out of everything. Do not try to run from pain or hide from problems. Instead, accept adversity in my name offering it up to me for my purposes. Thus your suffering gains mean, ing and draws you closer to me, joy emerges from the ashes of adversity through your trust and thankfulness. Problems are part of life, they are inescapable, woven into the very fabric of this fallen world. You tend to go into problem-solving mode all too readily, acting as if you have the capacity to fix everything. This is a habitual response, so automatic that it bypasses your conscious thinking. Not only does this habit frustrate you, it also distances you from me. Do not let fixing things be your top priority. 
you are ever so limited in your capacity to correct all that is wrong in the world around you, don't weigh yourself down with responsibilities that are not your own. Instead, make your relationship with me your primary concern. Talk with me about whatever is on your mind, seeking my perspective on the situation, rather than trying to fix everything that comes to your attention, ask me to show you what is truly important. Remember that you are on route to heaven, and let your problems fade in the light of eternity. I am the truth, the one who came to set you free, as the Holy Spirit controls your mind and actions more fully, you become free in me. You are increasingly released to become the one I created you to be. This is a work that I do in you as you yield to my spirit. I can do my best handiwork when you sit in the stillness of my presence, focusing your entire being on me. Let my thoughts burst freely upon your consciousness, stimulating abundant life. I am the way and the truth and the life. As you follow me, I lead you along paths of newness, ways you have never imagined. Don't worry about what is on the road up ahead. I want you to find your security in knowing me, the one who died to set you free. I have promised to meet all your needs according to my glorious riches. Your deepest, most constant need is for my peace. I have planted peace in the garden of your heart, where I live, but there are weeds growing there too. Pride, worry, selfishness, unbelief. I am the gardener, and I am working to rid your heart of those weeds. I do my work in various ways. When you sit quietly with me, I shine the light of my presence directly into your heart. In this heavenly light, peace grows abundantly and weeds shrivel up. I also send trials into your life. When you trust me in the midst of trouble, peace flourishes and weeds die away. Thank me for troublesome situations. The peace they can produce far outweighs the trials you endure. Waiting, trusting, and hoping are intricately connected, like golden strands interwoven to form a strong chain. Trusting is the central strand, because it is the response from my children that I desire the most. Waiting and hoping embellish the central strand and strengthen the chain that connects you to me. Waiting for me to work, with your eyes on me, is evidence that you really do trust me. If you mouth the words I trust you while anxiously trying to make things go your way, your words ring hollow, hoping is future directed, connecting you to your inheritance in heaven. However, the benefits of hope fall fully on you in the present. Because you are mine, you don't just pass time in your waiting. You can wait expectantly in hopeful trust. Keep your antennae out to pick up even the faintest glimmer of my presence. Walk peacefully with me through this day. You are wondering how you will cope with all that is expected of you. You must traverse this day like any other, one step at a time, instead of mentally rehearsing how you will do this or that. Keep your mind on my presence and on taking the next step. The more demanding your day, the more help you can expect from me. This is a training opportunity, since I designed you for deep dependence on your Shepherd King. Challenging times wake you up and amplify your awareness of needing my help. When you don't know what to do, wait while I open the way before you. Trust that I know what I'm doing, and be ready to follow my lead. I will give strength to you, and I will bless you with peace. Approach problems with a light touch. When your mind moves toward a problem area, 
You tend to focus on that situation so intensely that you lose sight of me. You pit yourself against the difficulty as if you had to conquer it immediately. Your mind gears up for battle, and your body becomes tense and anxious. Unless you achieve total victory, you feel defeated. There is a better way when a problem starts to overshadow your thoughts. Bring this matter to me, talk with me about it, and look at it in the light of my presence. This puts some much needed space between you and your concern, enabling you to see from my perspective. You will be surprised at the results. Sometimes you may even laugh at yourself for being so serious about something so insignificant. You will always face trouble in this life, but more importantly, you will always have me with you, helping you to handle whatever you encounter. Approach problems with a light touch by viewing them in my revealing light. When something in your life or thoughts makes you anxious, come to me and talk about it. Bring me your prayer and petition with thanksgiving, saying, "Thank you, Jesus, for this opportunity to trust you more." Though the lessons of trust that I send to you come wrapped in difficulties, the benefits far outweigh the cost. Well-developed trust will bring you many blessings, not the least of which is my peace. I have promised to keep you in perfect peace to the extent that you trust in me. The world has it backwards, teaching that peace is the result of having enough money, possessions, insurance, and security systems. My peace, however, is such an all-encompassing gift that it is independent of all circumstances. I meet you in the stillness of your soul. It is there that I seek to commune with you. A person who is open to my presence is exceedingly precious to me. My eyes search to and fro throughout the earth, looking for one whose heart is seeking me. I see you trying to find me. Our mutual search results in joyful fulfillment. Stillness of soul is increasingly rare in this world, addicted to speed and noise. I am pleased with your desire to create a quiet space where you and I can meet. Don't be discouraged by the difficulty of achieving this goal. I monitor all your efforts and am blessed by each of your attempts to seek my face. Trust me in all your thoughts. I know that some thoughts are unconscious or semi-conscious, and I do not hold you responsible for those. But you can direct conscious thoughts much more than you may realize. Practice thinking in certain ways, trusting me, thanking me, and those thoughts become more natural. Reject negative or sinful thoughts as soon as you become aware of them. Don't try to hide them from me. Confess them and leave them with me. Go on your way lightheartedly. This method of controlling your thoughts will keep your mind in my presence and your feet on the path of peace. I am with you and for you. You face nothing alone, nothing. When you feel anxious, know that you are focusing on the visible world and leaving me out of the picture. The remedy is simple: fix your eyes not on what is seen, but on what is unseen. Verbalize your trust in me, the living one who sees you always. I will get you safely through this day and all your days, but you can find me only in the present. Each day is a precious gift for my father. How ridiculous to grasp for future gifts when today's is set before you. Receive today's gift gratefully, unwrapping it tenderly and delving into its depths. As you savor this gift, you find me. Let me anoint you with my presence. I am King of Kings and Lord of Lords, dwelling in unapproachable light. 
When you draw near to me, I respond by coming closer to you. As my presence envelops you, you may feel overwhelmed by my power and glory. This is a form of worship, sensing your smallness in comparison to my greatness. Man has tended to make himself the measure of all things, but man's measure is too tiny to comprehend my majestic vastness. That is why most people do not see me at all, even though they live and move and have their being in me. Enjoy the radiant beauty of my presence. Declare my glorious being to the world. There is no place so desolate that you cannot find me there. When Hagar fled from her mistress, Sarah, into the wilderness, she thought she was utterly alone and forsaken. But Hagar encountered me in that desolate place. There she addressed me as the living one who sees me. Through that encounter with my presence, she gained courage to return to her mistress. No set of circumstances could ever isolate you from my loving presence. Not only do I see you always, I see you as a redeemed saint, gloriously radiant in my righteousness. That is why I take great delight in you and rejoice over you with singing. <laughs>